Hi everybody, it's Tim with Tim Boyer Photography. This week's tutorial is the 10 rules of bird photography. Now, there are rules in bird photography and generally they're good ideas and they're great guidelines, but they're not really rules. You don't have to do these and in some cases by doing these, you don't end up with the best picture. So let's get started with the 10 rules of bird photography. So rule number one is point your shadow at the bird. And generally, this is a great idea. If you point your shadow at the bird, the sun is behind you. That means the bird is evenly lit up. There's no harsh shadows. And the bird's going to look really good. In this particular image of a western sandpiper, I'm down low, eye level with the bird, which is one of the other rules we'll talk about in a minute. But there's no shadows on the bird because it's morning light. Here's an illustration. This is the rule. People say don't shoot if it's more than 15 to 20 degrees off the shooting zone there. If it's way to the right or if it's way to the left, don't shoot at it because you're going to start getting shadows in. Well, that's true to a degree. If you start off with really low angle light in the golden hour in the morning and you have side light coming in on a bird, it works. So don't get hung up with point your shadow at the bird as the only rule. Side lighting works if the light is low angled and warm in the morning or maybe even the late afternoon. So side lighting can work and this is where people get hung up on a rule and it's not really necessary. Hey, rule number two is the rule of thirds. Conventional wisdom here is if you put the horizon on one of the horizontal lines or if you put the bird on one of the vertical lines or you put the action or the eye on one of the circle red dots, the action points where the rule of thirds cross, you're going to have a nice composition. It's going to be balanced. It's going to look okay. But it shouldn't be called the rule of thirds. It's a guideline. So here's a classic example. The barbed wire that the house wren is sitting on is at the bottom third. The bird is on the vertical left thirds and it's a nice composition. Lots of open space in front of the bird. You know, it's a composition that works, but let's not get hung up on it because there are other things. There's a thing called the golden spiral. The first thing that happens here is your eyes focused on the spotted sandpiper and then you see those lines that kind of uh, go down and to the right in the frame uh, through the rocks there. Here's an example of the golden spiral and what it looks like. So our eye travels through the image and it's a really good thing for us to do is to create movement with the viewer's eyes in the image so that they're more engaged with the photography, they're more engaged with the subject. So rule number three is focus on the eye and this is really true. Focus on the eye of the bird. Our eye eyes search for the sharpest part of an image and so that the bird's eye is the sharpest part then people will immediately connect with the bird if the eye is fuzzy people can't really connect with the bird they're not going to be in the bird's world and then one thing that you can do here because this western grebe has naturally red eyes you can saturate the eyes a little bit just make them a little bit brighter red and then people are going to go wow and they're going to pop off the page. You don't want to oversaturate them. You still want the bird to look real. So rule number four is get a sparkle in the eye and we want a little highlight in the eye or a sparkle in the eye and that makes the bird look alive. And so this Dunlin at Ocean Shores, rule number one, my shadow's pointed at it. I'm down low, got a nice perspective on it, but I've got that little gleam in the eye. In this image of a Western Sandpiper, there's no gleam in the eye. So the bird doesn't look alive. It looks a little bit bedraggled or sad or uh, dead maybe, you know, I mean, it's, it just doesn't look like there's life in the bird and the sparkle is what does that. And then rule number five, the head should be angled slightly towards the camera. And so in this picture with this morning dove, the head angle is away from the camera. And then in the next image, the bird turned his head towards the camera a little bit. And you can see how just a slight movement in the bird's head pointed slightly towards the photographer. It's a more engaging image. The head angle is inviting. We can clearly see the detail of its face in that blue eye ring. Rule number six is level your tripod. So you want to level your tripod for a couple of different reasons. So the horizon can be level in your pictures. And also if you've got a big expensive telephoto lens on your tripod, by the tripod being level, it's going to be more stable and your tripod's not going to fall over. And so there's a safety reason to do this. And there's also a compositional reason to do this. So you get a straight horizon, but level your tripod, make sure that your tripod is a really a stable platform for your big telephoto lens. Rule number seven, shoot in the morning light. 
Morning light, when it first comes up, there's nice warm glow to it. There's not any harsh shadows. Your images are going to look better. The morning golden hour is better because A, birds are more active in the morning, and then also the light is cleaner and you get that warm buttery look to it. If you shoot in the evening golden hour, there's more pollution in the air and the light's going to take on red and orange tones and it just doesn't look quite as pretty or quite as nice as morning golden hour. And then don't shoot in the middle of the day. These harsh shadows, lots of contrast in the image. I don't know why we try to shoot in the middle of the day anymore. Most of the time we get pictures like this where part of the image is blown out and the shadows are really dark, even though after post-processing it doesn't look quite that bad, but it is pretty bad still. It's just too much harsh light. Soft light on your birds makes them look nicer. And then rule number eight, get a soft background. So there are three ways to get a soft background. One is make sure that the distance between the bird and the background is far enough so the background is soft. Number two is use a longer telephoto lens so that you compress the background and that it blurs out the background. And then three, shoot wide open at f4, f5.6, f2.8. So if you shoot wide open on your telephoto lens, then you're going to be have a sharp bird and you're gonna have a blurry background or a soft background. Hey, and rule number nine, get eye level with the bird. And you've seen that in a lot of the images that I've shown so far. I've been eye level with the bird. If you're eye level with the bird, you're in their world you're connecting with them it makes it easier for the viewer to connect with the subject and the images just look a lot more stunning it's more personal it's more intimate and that makes a better image in this image of a horned grebe I'm looking down on the bird it's sort of like I'm towering over it I'm superior than it so try to get eye level and create a nicer image for your bird hey and rule number 10 is separation for birds in flight so here we have three sandhill cranes and there's some room between all three of them. They're not jammed up against each other. One's not in front of or over the other one. In the next image, you can see that there's two sandhill cranes here. Well, maybe you can tell there's two sandhill cranes here. And they're kind of like colliding in midair. And so we want to avoid this and we want to have separation in our bird images. Here's a beautiful image of four sandhill cranes, nicely separated, nice composition. It just makes a better image. Now, if you want to learn more about bird photography, consider getting a copy of my book. You can get it on Amazon as a Kindle or as a trade paperback. You can also order a signed copy from my website, timboyerphotography.com. And then if you want to even learn more about bird photography and you want to get up to speed really quickly with bird photography, consider taking one of my workshops. I offer seven workshops throughout the Western United States. We have a lot of fun and people learn a lot and some people have created award-winning images on my workshops. Hey, thanks a lot for watching this one. I hope you enjoyed the 10 rules of bird photography. Experiment with these, use them as guidelines, break them as often as you can because they're just guidelines, they're not really rules. Although if you do use these as guidelines, they will help your bird photography. And look at this example right here. So the owl is on the vertical rule of thirds, but the water line is smack dab in the middle of the frame. Now I had to do that to get the reflection in, but guess what? I kept part of the rule, broke part of the rule, the composition works, it makes a nice photo. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye.